Item number, SCP-097, Object Class Euclid, Special Containment Procedures. SCP-097 is contained within the limits of the property where it was initially discovered, Zone SCP-097. The property is surrounded by an 8 meter tall concrete block fence, fitted with barbed wire and security camera systems. Satellite images of Zone SCP-097 are to be doctored, removing all traces of the area. Any and all new plant growth outside the containment area suspected to originate from within the SCP is to be sterilized through the application of boiling salt water and or incinerated. Absolutely all abnormal behavior is to be reported to Dr. Bridge within 10 minutes of occurrence. If any personnel or their families experience hallucinations or thematically related dreams outside of containment, they are to contact Dr. Bridge to schedule treatment. Localities surrounding SCP-097 specifically redacted are to be monitored from the 1st of April until the 1st November of every year for affected civilians. Medical establishments dealing with sleep abnormalities are to be monitored for signs of SCP-097's influence. Civilians below the age of 16 encountered alone with one square kilometer of the zone SCP-097 are to be taken into Foundation custody and are to be treated with Class B amnestic and returned home, or the nearest police station. Personnel tasked with the return of civilians are to avoid public exposure. Each agent is to be assigned a cover story to follow if they do encounter civilians en route to their destinations. See Level 3 staff for details. The morning after the first frost of the year, a team of 25 agents armed with ag agricultural tools are to enter SCP-097 and clear away the outer plant matter. This process is not to continue past dusk. Description SCP-097 is a 10-acre area of land in the state of Redacted, in the Midwestern United States. It is the abandoned remains of the Redacted County Fair in 1969, an area of approximately 2.3 kilometers squared. Structures within the SCP area exist in a state of moderate disrepair, consistent with the expected age and environment. At the center of SCP-097 lie the remains of a 1956 GMC pickup truck, majority of which is crushed beneath a colossal pumpkin of unknown subtype. Henceforth, SCP-097-1. SCP-097-1 stands approximately 7.4 meters tall and 8.1 meters in diameter at its widest. Current estimates put SCP-097-1 at approximately 15,000 kilograms, approximately 33,000 pounds. This pumpkin remains roughly spherical in shape, instead of spreading out under its own weight, as could be expected of a plant of its size. The remaining portion of SCP-097 is overgrown with several dozen varieties of pumpkins, with over 70 subspecies yet identified, and many previously unknown to agriculture. Many of these pumpkins have been shown capable of growing to enormous sizes, the average estimate, estimated weight being around 250 kilograms. These pumpkins, along with the assorted other crops, grow with, on, and around the remains of the 1969 fairgrounds, creating a maze-like arrangement of plant life. The average height of the walls within SCP-097 is 1.6 meters, though this may vary from year to year. Between April and November each year, the area within SCP-097 has produced a number of anomalous phenomenon, ranging from benign to implicitly aggressive. To date, 17 agents have been severely maimed within SCP-097, 8 having died. See Event Log SCP-097 for a brief listing of recorded phenomenon. Addendum Historical Note Prior to the construction of SCP-097's containment wall, instances of what is now known as SCP-2171-1 were occasionally observed to form fragmented walls, and at one point a near-complete ring of 2171 around SCP-097's area of effect. This behavior ceased following the containment wall's completion. The purpose and implications behind this interaction are of yet unknown. Effects of SCP-097 on Children In addition to its immediate effects outlined in Event Log SCP-097, SCP-097-1 appears to produce an undetectable signal towards children in an undetermined range. For clarity, children will be referred to individuals up to the age of 10. 
Beginning in early April, civilian children will, within SCP-097's unidentified range may be overcome with somnambulism on clear nights. Affected children will move around their homes, stopping to face closed doorways for several seconds before moving to the next nearest doorway, eventually returning to bed. At first, this behavior will occur only once a week, beginning with only the doors on a single floor. This sleepwalking will become more frequent, by mid-August happening every night. If forcibly awoken at any time during these episodes, they will scream for several seconds before succumbing to a degree of confusion. After an affected child is awoken in this manner, the effect will cease, and the child will never know any further signs of SCP-097's influence. Over the course of two to three months, these episodes will become more and more thorough, Indi affected individuals seeking out each doorway inside their home, as well as those at their household's property, such as garages, car doors, and fence gates. Eventually, they will begin visiting the front doors of neighbors. Beginning in September, affected children who have remained undisturbed during these episodes will begin to remain outside at sunrise, laying on the grass near their homestead and returning to full REM sleep. Affected children may recall dreams of centering around autumn activities. Between September 1st and November 1st, if the affected child has not been awoken during the preceding sleepwalking episodes, they will cease the previously established activity during the sleepwalk, and instead begin to walk directly towards SCP-097's location. They will travel over fields and down secondary roads, steadily moving towards SCP-097. Local geography consists mostly of undeveloped Foundation-owned property, facilitating uninterrupted travel. Upon arrival at SCP-097, an affected child will sit down before SCP-097-1 and begin singing undefinable gibberish as music begins to play. While a number of instruments have been recorded, simple drums and pipes are mostly consistently encountered. After several minutes, childlike entities will crawl out from the tangled flora or break out of larger pumpkins from within SCP-097. The children will be wearing whatever they were last seen with, most often pajamas or similar clothing. Many of these entities match those children known to be lost to SCP-097-1. The entities will surround the affected civilian child, dancing and singing in a circle as SCP-097-1 begins to emit dim light. The affected child will awaken, normally expressing a great deal of terror. The instant any vocalization is produced, the entities will swarm and kill the child. Methods used are different in each instance, but usually involve dismemberment or strangulation. At this point, any and all efforts to interrupt the entities will fail, whether through breakdown of equipment, sudden intangibility of the subjects, or express violence on the part of SCP-097. After the death of the affected child, SCP-097-1 will split open and the entities will hurl the remains into it, before themselves climbing in. SCP-097-1 will then close and the music will stop. Before the containment wall was erected, at least blank children between the ages of 3 and 10 are known to have been lost to SCP-097. See Event Log SCP-097 for current examples of SCP-097's behavior. Event Log SCP-097 This is a general incident log for SCP-097. For the cycle between 9-1 blank and 11-1 blank. This is an abridged version. Please requisition full individual reports from Dr. Bridge. During this time, four civilian children were captured and returned to their families. 9-3 blank. 9-39. Cameras 3B, 4A, 4C, 5B view child approximately four years of age walk between tangles of plant matter towards SCP-097-1 over an eight-minute period, child appearing to be dragging a stuffed animal. 9-5 blank, 1733. Human scream heard from within SCP-097, heard throughout the site. On-site personnel describe it as possessing a child's voice, sustained for approximately three minutes before stopping abruptly. 098 blank. Several bedsheet ghosts are seen throughout the security feeds throughout the day. Would only appear for approximately one to three seconds before vanishing again. Staff did not report seeing any anomalous entities firsthand. 913 blank. 2219. 
Unidentifiable singing is heard throughout the site, persisting for three hours before becoming silent. Recordings reveal song-like gibberish, with up to 30 individual children's voices singing at any time. 919 blank, 1427. Agent McRoy cuts a pumpkin's vine with a machete. Severed vine proceeded to bleed approximately 50 liters of human blood before shriveling. 924 blank. Overnight, two separate pumpkin patches grew into the rough approximations of humanoid figures lying on the ground. 925 blank. 517. Agent Long found decapitated neck against a pumpkin. 927 blank. 250. All light bulbs on site burn out within a two minute period. 930 blank. 1216. Sudden shift noted in the location of several dozen gourd plants. 10-1-1429 Agent Cole accidentally damages and breaks pumpkin during weekly examination of SCP-097. Pumpkin splits open to revealing a complete human child skeleton in the fetal position within. 10-02 blank blank 29 freshly decapitated crows found outside SCP-097's containment wall. 10-6 blank 637 Matured pumpkin plant found to have replaced a potted plant growing inside Dr. Bridges' office. 10-7 blank 1650 Agent Matthews falls unconscious during patrol and cannot be awoken until removed from property. 10-11 blank 738. Research assistant Sturm reports overwhelming taste and scent of pumpkin pre-mating her senses. No other personnel report anomaly. 1013 blank blank. Sounds of steady drums playing throughout the day from 00 to 2359. 1017 blank 319. Male child approximately six years of age in clad pajamas. Seen climbing through corn stalks on the eastern end of SCP-097, moving towards SCP-097-1. 1020 blank, 1307. All personnel within 3.6 kilometers of SCP-097-1 report hallucinations of orange maze and children's laughter. 1023 blank, 01. All power and backup powers of the area failed. Upon recovery, blank pumpkins within SCP-097 were have to change into carved lanterns. 1023 blank 813 Team 097-Alpha reports seeing and hearing children playing among the flora within SCP-097. Recordings lack the entities expected from the reports. 1025 blank 1149 Z-Maze Indurata kernels fall from the sky around SCP-097. Does not fall within containment walls. 1026 blank 2113. Research assistant O'Toole overcome with nausea and vomits pumpkin seeds. O'Toole did not eat pumpkin seeds previous to vomiting. 1027 blank 1003. Research assistant O'Toole reported to have died overnight. Autopsies reveals thoracic cavity was filled with pumpkin seeds. 1028 blank blank. Unintelligible whispering gibberish heard by fertile female personnel throughout the area when in view of SCP-097. Phenomenon continues throughout the day, continuing for the duration of SCP-097 cycle until November 1st. 1028 blank. 1745. Headlights of vehicle underneath SCP-097-1 light and stay lit until daybreak. 1029 blank. Fruit trees within SCP-097 blossom over the course of five hours beginning at roughly seven. Flowers wither and soon fall after. 1029 blank. 807. Pumpkins near south entrance of SCP-097 begin spontaneously bleeding from the stem. Each continued bleeding for three hours. 1031 blank 310. Several dozen identified spheres of red light viewed a drifting above SCP-097 and surrounding area. When light was shown directly on the spheres, a piercing shriek was heard. 1031 blank 12. 
Sounds of steady drums are recorded from within SCP-097. Drums persist for the following 12 hours. 1031 blank, 1419. All strawberry plants within SCP-097 wither in unison. 1031 blank, 1743. Between 25 and 30 animate human skeletons of varying size are recorded breaking out of larger pumpkins within SCP-097. Skeletons traverse through SCP-097's flora to the north end peach tree and hang themselves from its branches using lengths of grapevine, electrical cable, and decaying rope. Skeletons cease anomalous behavior after phantomiming death by hanging. Death throws. Continued for approximately 23 minutes. 